In this video, we're going to take a look at using forms to create applications within Visual Studio. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. And this time, instead of the console, I'm going to choose Windows Forms application. I'm going to call this one Hello World. I already have a Hello World from the console application, so I'm just going to put two after it. Hello World 2. Hit OK. Now before we get going writing code, just a couple of things just to point out. You should see a toolbox over here on the left hand side by default. If you click on the toolbox or hover over it, you'll see the tools show up here. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And then over here on the right hand side, you should see a Solution Explorer. Uh, on the Solution Explorer, if you open this up, you're going to see our first form. This is the form that we're currently working with. I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. As well as the Properties window. And the Properties window is going to be for the actual tools we're using. Now the little push pin uh, will either auto hide or actually show our windows. So I've got the Solution Explorer open and I've got the Properties window open as well. And I'll leave the toolbox so that it collapses here with the push pin uh, facing to the left here. And So now these are basically the main windows that I want to use while I'm working with my objects. I currently have a form to work with which the form is going to be my main source of adding controls or adding tools from the toolbox onto the actual form itself. If you do not see one of the windows, then all you need to do is go to View, and here in View you can actually see several of the different things, such as the Properties window, you've also got the Toolbox lo lo located here, as well as the Solution Explorer, and this will actually bring those windows up in case they've been closed accidentally. Now with most objects that we work with with C-sharp here in the Visual Studio IDE, we're going to require I'm um, changing two things. The name, and if I scroll up here, I'll see the name. Now I've got the form selected, and since the form is selected, I'm going to work with the properties for that form, and you can see it listed here. Uh, if you've got something looks that looks a little different, you've got to look at your two different windows. I've got this A through Z button right here, which is going to uh, list them alphabetically. And so at the very top here, uh, name is in parentheses, and so it begins here before the A's. But the name is going to be the name of the object that we're working with. And so if we're going to ever reference this within our code, we're going to want to have a name that we can understand. And so I'm going to call this FRM. I'm going to prefix it with the FRM to let me know that I'm dealing with a form. And then I'm going to call this one Hello World. And hit Enter. And you really don't see much change, in, in fact, of the form itself. The form looks identical to what it was before. And we're going to use this for uh, whenever we reference this in code. So I've got a name, which is one of the most common things we're going to change for every object we work with, as well as the text value. And so here's my text value. And for the text value, I'm going to go ahead and call this Hello World. Now the text value, I will notice when I hit Enter. So I'll hit Enter. And you'll notice that the text value actually, or the text property actually changes the title of our form where it says hello world and so that's where this appears and so I've got the text value changed as well as my name of my actual form itself has been named FRM hello world and so we've got that set up now the form by itself will not do anything I'll need to add some controls such as a button and so we're going to go ahead and go to the toolbox and I'm going to find where it says button and you've got two ways of, of working with the button I can drag it out of the toolbox and drop it on the form or I can double click it so if I double click it, you'll notice here now that the button has been placed on the actual form itself and I'm going to go ahead and drag it. And I can drag this button around or this object around and place it wherever I want. I'll go ahead and just place it right there. And then we're going to change the properties of this. Now I'm going to scroll up here in properties. The properties here are for the button because the button is currently selected. So you'll need whatever object you're working with that's selected that's the properties, uh, the property window will display the properties for that particular button. So the two things that I want to change with the button to start off with are the name and uh, for the button I'll, start, I'll prefix it with CMD to let me know that it's going to be a button, command button for my form itself and then we're going to call this one OK. And I'll scroll down and in my text value I'm going to go ahead and type in OK and you'll notice that when I hit OK and hit Enter, that the text of the button actually changed to OK. So now I have a button on my form, and I've got the form itself. A couple other objects that we're going to want to have. So let's go ahead and add a label. And so there's my label. 
And so now we'll change the properties of our label. So the label is currently selected, and you can see here I've got the properties for the label, the name. I'll just change this to LBL, and we'll go ahead and call this title. And I'm going to scroll down and change the text value. The text value is what will appear here on my form. So I'll change this to welcome to the hello world. you'll notice now the text has changed as well. Now we'll go ahead and center this. So there we'll go. We'll make it look centered within my application itself and my form. And now we're going to go ahead and add a text box. So we'll look for the text box and this time I'm going to just drag it. And if I drag it out and I come back here I can actually place it where I want it to lo be located. And so here we are with our text box. And in our text box we're going to change two properties. Then let's go to change the name. We'll call this TXT, and we'll call this one just uh, display. And so that's the name of my text box, TXT display. Uh, that's going to display our hello world text after they hit OK. And so I'm going to scroll down and change the text. Well, actually, the text has nothing in it, and we'll go ahead and leave this empty. Uh, we're going to actually modify the text property here within our code. So this is currently empty, and you'll notice within my text box there is no text. So now speaking of changing things in code, let's go ahead and go to code view. Now there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, to start with, we're going to go ahead and do the easiest way, which is to just double click on the object that you want to write code for. And so on this particular one, I want to write code so that when I click on this button, this is going to be an event driven type of application. When I click on the button, that's my event. Uh, something's going to run or something's going to change in my program. And so what I want to happen is when I click on this button, I want the text hello world to display within my text box here. So I'm going to go ahead and double click my button now. And this is going to take us to our code view of our application. And you can see they've set us up a class as well as our uh, methods. And I've got this method here called CMD OK underscore click, which is going to provide us with the code or basically the method of whenever somebody clicks on this object, which is our button OK, we're going to run this code. So this is where I want to place my code that I want to run. And so simply what we're going to just do is type in the object that I want to modify, which is going to be that text box. And if I start typing in TXT, you'll see that there I go, text box or TXT display. That's the name of the text box. I'm going to use the period here and I'll get the option here of finding where the text value is. So let's go ahead and go down to the text value or I can start typing it in and I should be able to find it. There it is. And if you notice here it says it does get or sets the current text in the system.windows.forms.textbox. So it actually changes the text box's text. And I'll go ahead and hit tab and finish that in. So txt display dot text is going to equal. Now we're going to enter in here a string and so I'll need to put this within quotes. And I'll use a double quote there. Hello world. We'll go ahead and end that with a quote. So now what we've got set up, and I'll put the semicolon to end my statement. So what I have now set up is whenever I click on the OK button, this code will run and only this code right here within this command or the event. So let's go back to design view. You can see that nothing seems to have changed in the form view. I've got my code, so let's go ahead and run our application. I'm going to go ahead and start debugging, and I can hit the little symbol. It looks like a play symbol, and my form should pull up. And here's my form. Uh, so this is the program that I've created so far, and if I hit the OK button, you'll see Hello World displayed within my text box. And if I take the text and delete it, every time I hit OK, it will run that code over and over and over again. So this will conclude the video on creating our first form for programming.